leaked report shows LGBTQ plus British soldiers were once subjected to electroshock and conversion therapy. According to Bloomberg, the copy of the report received reportedly details how UK LGBTQ plus military staff was forced to endure so-called conversion therapy, sexual assault, unwanted surveillance, and blackmail from their superiors between 1967, when homosexuality was partially, partially decriminalized, and 2000, when a ban on gay soldiers serving in the military was lifted. Anonymous testimony from one victim on the report includes descriptions of having electrodes attached to their head, being shown images of women, and being given shocks that left bruising and burn marks on the skin. Other veterans told the review they were sexually assaulted by senior staff and then either dismissed when they complained or told they would be outed as gay and dismissed from the forces. One woman, who said she joined the Navy in the 90s before being kicked out for being gay, detailed how her treatment led to alcohol dependency and a negative effect on her mental health. The LGBTQ plus veterans independent review was carried out by Chair Lord Etherton, independent of both the government and the armed forces, and was reportedly submitted to the government last week for review and response. I don't know if you remember just a few months ago in January 2023, the Church of England issued a formal apology for its treatment of LGBTQ plus people. And now in May 2023, this horrific story comes to light. Meanwhile, how many queens were boohooing over the passing of Queen Elizabeth II and then watched the coronation of Doofus Charles? Well, we just really need to seriously think about our fascination with these horrible colonialists and what they've done to our country. Well, I'm, I'm not saying that colonialism is great. And well, I mean, I grew up in Hong Kong, the only colony that the British ever did, right? I mean, uh, uh, because honestly, Hong Kong is was Hong Kong before Xi Jinping ruined it because of British. It wasn't because of the PRC, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. But this report detail, but on the other hand, this, this conduct takes place from 1967 to 2000. I cannot guarantee you that US Army did not do the same. Right. Be surprised. And right. so, and so, you know, glass houses. So in, in other words, I just think that the prime minister should apologize. And the royal family has nothing to do with it. They yeah. don't oversee military policy. They're just figureheads. They're there to stand and look pretty and stand in castles so that other tourists would take pictures because the castles are occupied versus the ruined ones in France. Yes, and just yesterday I was watching CBS News and they were talking about a case, you know, in the U.S. military. You know, and not not long ago, you know, in the in the eighties, I think it was eighty mm nineties, -hmm. and this guy, you know, that that the the, the the U.S. Uh, armed forces were trying to find reasons to charge LGBTQ mm. personnel mm -hmm. with some kind of law, and this guy went to jail. Mm -hmm. He went to jail for a few years, and you know, then he was released. But you know, the, the reporter from CBS News were saying, "Well, why don't we start with, like you said, uh, how about a, an apology?" Right. You know, right. now that the law has changed, not even an apology. He has a record. He has not received uh, benefits, obviously. Mm -hmm. right. You know, and in the meantime, years gone by. He couldn't get jobs because of the record. I mean, is the impact post, you know, this awful, you know, part of the history of the U.S. and then, you know, even the don't ask, don't tell, mm. you know, and what the consequences have, you know, it didn't end there. Today, this person is still dealing with the consequences mm -hmm. and, you know, no apologies from the U.S., you know, armed forces. So, and right now, I'm pretty sure that the, uh, the British government is running a program where any kind of homosexuality related offenses, if, that, that if you were convicted because of those, you can get your record expunged. Oh. And so I the same should thing be. should be done to here, right? here, the British for sure. armed forces for those people who were kicked out yeah. because they're gay and because they're forced out because they were harassed. Well, and remember, the U.S., I mean, there's a couple points. First, the U.S. didn't allow openly gay people to serve for another decade after Britain. So, you know, as you said, glass houses. One of the things that surprised me the most about this study is that this was happening in the 80s and the 90s. Right. And not that it was ever 
correct to do, but it's, I think it's one of those things that you sort of associate back with post-war, the 1950s, uh, maybe 1960s. But that's what's happening, like, just like in all of our professional careers. You know what I mean? This isn't something I read about in the history books. This is something that was happening while we were doing our thing. It's the conservatism of, that, of the military, of the armed forces. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They weren't like entertainment reporters. They were soldiers. Well, if they'd been entertainment reporters, they'd have been a lot happier. First uh, off, we don't have to get up at five in the morning. Well, but let's also, I have to give at least hope that with this report, things are desperately going to change. They are at least a mile ahead of where we are in the military because they're discussing it and they're admitting it and they're <laughs> investigating it. And they're, it sounds like they're willing to make plans to rectify it to certain degrees in terms of recti you know the the erasing the false charges and possibly encouraging or offering some kind of financial restitution. obligation and restitution we here in the united states are not so mm -hmm. you know i'm glad that we're discussing this but there is some light at the end of the at the end of the tunnel at least in this particular situation for the history that maybe we can hopefully not see it happen again and mm -hmm. that's what this is giving me hope for yeah mm -hmm. but like you said we're um, uh, britain is a mile ahead, ahead of yeah. where we are and this but that's but that's, but, us. but that's bad enough we're still we've still got a good third to 40 percent of our population that wants to take us right. backwards yeah. and i understand that which is why we need to which is we dangerous need, we need to understand our mm -hmm. histories mm -hmm. we need to build our allies we need to build build our business partnerships this whole this whole episode of the show is all about working together and finding the resources that we need to stand up and fight back mm. Absolutely. We are Queer News Tonight, the world's first and only live daily LGBTQ plus evening news show from Happening Out Television Network. In the model of PBS and NPR, we educate, inform, and entertain by supporting the 10 pillars of the LGBTQ plus community with more than 100,000 a week watching on Roku, Apple Television, and other channels. To keep the stories going, we accept donations with 100% transparency. Stay updated and live authentically with Queer News Tonight.